Investing in gold doesn't have to be complicated. I'm Colin Plume, the CEO of Noble Gold Investments, and I want to take the time to show you how investing in a gold IRA can help you hedge your bets against inflation and other economic concerns on the horizon. Visit Noble Gold Investments and get our free gold investment guide on buying gold the right way. And make sure you're investing with the right company. Visit noblegoldinvestments.com. Good morning. I'm still reporting on space. On Thursday, the United States returned to its place of space supremacy with the launch of SpaceX's Starship from its star base on the southern tip of Texas. Although this first flight of Starship in its super heavy configuration was deliberately blown up by Elon Musk and his Starbase team at an altitude of 40 kilometers, that's 25 miles or over 131,000 feet, hundreds of the project's engineers were shown wildly cheering it as a total success. Why? The super heavy configuration is twice as big as anything humans have attempted to launch before. It was so heavy, about 120 metric tons, that it took a full 10 seconds to rise above its billowing brown cloud of smoke and chunks of concrete as its 33 engines nearly incinerated the launch pad, blowing away most of the concrete below except for the massive pillars upon which the Starship sat. Two of the engines could be seen exploding about two minutes into the flight, and before it was self-destructed, up to eight of the 33 engines were not functioning. Elon Musk afterwards tweeted that a water deluge system was under development to cool the pad from the tremendous heat output, but they had decided to launch anyway just to see what would happen. To Musk, this was no problem. It will quickly be rebuilt, and not just a little bit stronger, but massively so. And, according to Musk, they will be ready to launch again in a month or two. As the engineering team commented live on the SpaceX feed, both before and after the flight, if Starship cleared the tower, it would be deemed an unmitigated success. Is this just whistling past the graveyard bravado? No. Musk's iterative approach includes the on-site manufacturing capability to build 10 new Starships or more per year, 10 times faster than NASA, the government's space program, could achieve, and for a fraction of the cost. Musk doesn't care if the first five blow up, so long as the second five do not. Quickly learning from these failures, two to three years from now, SpaceX will be launching and then landing one of these behemoths every month, then cleaning them up for relaunch. Musk's approach from the very beginning has always been to design a launch system that is totally reusable. No sense in cluttering up the waters of the Gulf of Mexico with dead launch vehicles. So, while this initial explosion may seem bad, SpaceX's process of riding the bleeding edge, that is, accepting some failure as a key part of speeding their success in developing and improving their rockets. This is happening fast. SpaceX plans on launching its first crew mission to the moon in 2024. That's next year. And in 2026, they will launch the first crewed Starship mission to Mars. By 2028, they, in combination with NASA, will have established a permanent base on the moon. Sometime in the 2030s, they will have established a permanent human presence on Mars. That's only 10 to 15 years from now, and with luck, I'll still be reporting from the Citadel of World Freedom.
good day.